Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Robin Ruick, and we are going to do an NCAA bars section now. I will first go through a few of the rules, most of which hopefully are reviewed to you, and then we will get right into practice judging. We have a 9.4 start value with NCAA, and sometimes that's easy for us to forget. So remember, 9.4 start value and the 3-3-2, three, three, three A's, three B's, and two C's. Now, on bars, I have not seen a whole lot of um, routines missing these, but sometimes if there's a fall, there's an error, remember, you still got to have those 3-3-2s, three, three, so a total of eight elements. And then also remember that there is a chart with element values that differ from level 10. Before you judge, make sure that you take a look at that. Next, rules of bonus. Remember that you must have a minimum of one tenth in D or E difficulty and one tenth in connective value. The rest of the four tenths in bonus can be earned either with the DE or the, or the connective value bonus. So for example, let's say an athlete has six tenths in Ds and Es, but no connective value, her start value would be just a 9.9 .9 because she has to have at least one tenth in each. Any E release element or single D bar release element receives an extra one tenth bonus and it's considered difficulty bonus. Special requirements for NCAA are two tenths each and the special requirements are two bar changes, two flight elements with a minimum of two different, different Cs or a D and a B, you cannot include the dismount on that. One element with a long axis turn that's at least a C, and that's not the mount or dismount, and then a C dismount. If that C dismount is immediately preceded by the same two A or B elements, deduct a tenth from start value. Okay, so that easiest example for me to remember that is if with the athlete does giant, giant double back. Perhaps she intended to do a harder dismount, but she... Um, decided to do the, the C instead. So if she goes giant, giant, giant double back, then we would take a 10th off the start value for that. Composition rules for NCAA. These are the only composition errors that we can deduct. Uh, lack of variety would be a half 10th. Distribution could be a half 10th. More than one squat or stoop on low bar with or without the sole circle. Um, once you hit two of them, it's a 10th. Uncharacteristic elements or the three quarters front giant, those are each a flat tenth. And then the choice of elements not up to the competitive level. We have to put up a orange up to the level deduction for this. The schools are supposed to supply this. Theirs are probably prettier than my little handmade one here. But I flip this from how it's written because this helps me remember. I start by looking at the dismount and saying, okay, did the dismount um, was it a D or better, or did it have a C in bonus combination? If it does not, I'm done. There, there's an up-to-the-level deduction. I don't have to go into the more complicated release move part of this up-to-the-level. And that can happen. Again, um, an athlete may decide to do an easier dismount than what she had originally composed in a routine. Then the other part of the up-to-the-level is releases, a single D release on a single bar, or an E release, or two D releases, or two E elements excluding the dismounts. And then required technique, we need this for when we do our practice judging, when you're looking at the angle of the body. I've got my Vicky. If there is a shoulder angle, you see the shoulder angle here, then we would measure from the shoulder through to the lowest part of her body. If there's no shoulder angle, in other words, she's stretched and up near handstand phase, then we measure from her hands through to wherever her lowest body part is. It's often the feet. The angle of completion when they're doing a cast or when they're doing um, an uprise, if the hips are extended and then the feet come together, that's the, at the peak. That's typically what we're looking for. If the hips are extended but the legs stay apart, then we would just deduct for the leg separation, but count how high they are. Um, execution and amplitude, these are deductions of note, and please understand that there are many more deductions. You need to refer to the uh, DP code of points for the other deductions. First of all is under rotation of release or flight elements up to a tenth. I see that quite often in the toe shoot from the low bar to the high bar. Sometimes they'll just go wham and they won't rotate so that they have the nice swing into the K 
kip. It's usually a kip after that that they don't release. Or sometimes you see it like on a tkacha where they'll go straight up and straight down. And then again, they don't have the swing ability for, into the next scale. They'll typically kind of uh, land without <laughs> being able to swing very well. Uh, precision of handstand position throughout the exercise. You may find that there are handstands throughout the exercise that are not necessarily deductible. They're within 10 degrees, but the overall, this is an, an area you can have a deduction if, if they were not precise throughout the exercise. Dynamics throughout up to two, that would be the routine that struggles a bit, doesn't swing. Landing too close on the bar dismount. I call that scared the judge. If you jump because they've landed close to the bar on the dismount, that's when you take that 10th deduction. Touch or brush the apparatus or the mat with your foot or feet is up to a 10th. If you hit the uh, bar with your foot or feet, up, it's a flat two tenths. If you hit the mat with your foot or your feet, that's three tenths. And the obvious question is, how do you differentiate between a touch or a brush versus a hit? And I think personally that a touch or brush is something that keeps moving. They might brush, but they keep moving versus a hit, which is going to be louder, first of all. What I look for with the bars is if you think they hit the bars, say they're doing a giant or something into their dismount and they hit the low bar, is the low bar vibrating? Make sure you're looking for the vibration. If they're doing, say, Tkachev or something in the high bar, they hit their feet. Is the bar vibrating? That will help you to determine that they hit or at least brush the bar. But as to whether that was a brush or a hit versus um, a brush or a touch versus a hit, well, that's going to be a judgment call. Okay, just some reminders on our cast or swing to handstand. Basically, what's important here is that if it's within 20 degrees, we award the value in a case of a cast handstand, the B. If it's between that 10 and 20 degrees, we'll have a half tenth error. If they're going with flight to the handstand on the low bar, it's really the same thing. They have to be within 20 degrees to be awarded the higher value part. And we would deduct a half a tenth if they're between 10 and 20 degrees. If the turns are within 20 degrees, we take no deduction. And then we start taking deductions when they're more than 20 degrees out of handstand phase. And then this one you need for our practice judging, the giant half turn. For that one, if they scope up to the handstand within 20 degrees of vertical, we award the C with no deduction for amplitude. You might have other deductions, body position or other things. If you finish within 21 to 44 degrees from vertical, then you get the B. If it finishes from 45 to horizontal, then you would get an A. And if you finish below horizontal, then you get no value part credit. And depending on the angle, you may have some deductions for late completion of the turn. Here's some tools re when reviewing videos. Um, I highly recommend that you get a protractor. This is very helpful. And in fact, I needed my protractor to make up my little circle things where I can hold this up and see, is, is she within that 10 or 20 degrees of the turn? I also sometimes need my magnifying glass. But just some ideas of some tools that you can use when you're studying and getting ready to, to judge bars. Another thing is slow motion. Watch a lot of video slow motion. And here's how to do that on YouTube if you don't know this. First thing, you will find a little gear and you want to click on that. Second, when you click on the gear, it'll give you a choice of playback speed or quality. You want to click on playback speed. And then third, you can choose your playback speed. You can even slow them down to as much as quarter speed, or if you want to speed them up faster than normal, you can do that too. But just um, how to do it, if you hadn't heard about that before. Okay, so for practice judging, what happened is your Naj um, Education Committee picked six routines, and we will judge five of them. I picked five of them. You'll see why when we get to them. The first time you'll view it in regular speed, then we'll look at my evaluation, and then we'll do a slow-mo with uh, freeze frames and the angles drawn in. And just a little disclaimer, the, the evaluation and the score is based on my opinion. There might be some errors and do expect to disagree in some cases.
here's my evaluation of this routine. Um, she started with an uprise to handstand. I had a slight body position error there, half tenth, into a nice high Takacho, so CD plus one. And remember the Takacho being a single bar release gets an extra DV and followed by a pack. Then she did a glide, half turn glide. To me, that was the place in the routine where the largest error was. I wasn't quite sure. And even in slow motion, I can't really tell if she hit her feet. I think if you're alive, you would probably take a brush of her feet. But she certainly did not extend her glide on the second glide. So I took a tenth in there. Um, squat on, long hang kip. She did not extend her kip. Cast handstand a little short. Giant half I thought was okay. Front giant half I had a little half tenth in body position error and then a double back with a slight hop on the dismount. So if you add all that up and she had five tenths in connection value, she had a CD and a DD, one, two, three, and then CCC, four, five in connection value. She had three tenths in DV. She had two Ds plus that extra DV for doing the single bar release. She had all her uh, bar changes, her C flight, two, uh, two C flights. She had two D flights, so that was fine. She had her LA turn. 10 0 start value. I had 3 5 in execution and amplitude, so my final score was 9.65. Okay, we're going to watch this routine in slow motion. Okay, she's on top of the bar there. That was good. Nice high Takacho. And there, I'm not sure if she hit her feet or not, but she certainly did not extend her kip. I'm looking at the front of her body there. And same thing here. She's still got, she hasn't ex fully extended her hips there. A little bit short on the handstand there. So that would be a half a tenth deduction for the height there of the handstand. A little bit of body position and then nice and high, but a slight, slight problem with her um, landing. Okay, so here goes number five. Okay, so this routine started with a glide kip, cast handstand. Um, she, you'll find that she's in handstand position, but I had just a little bit of arch in the back as she went up there into a um, Shapashnikova followed by a pack, so DD plus two. Uh, when we watch it slow motion, you might have had a deduction on the body position and or height of that Shapas. I didn't when I saw it first. Glide kip, cast handstand, again, a little bit of body position there into um, what is called a Van Leeuwen internationally or a Bihowski um, in the US. It's basically an E scale. It's a toe on, shaposh kind of move with a half turn to grab the high bar. Long hang kip, cast handstand, giant, giant um, double back. And what you're gonna watch for is the form as she passes the low bar on her giants. And then she had a step on her landing. So she had two tenths in CV, seven tenths in DV because she got that extra DV for doing the E release. 10 0 start value, I had 0.25 in execution and amplitude and a 975 score. Let's watch this slow motion and see what you say, think. Okay, there's no doubt she's up there in the handstand position there. Like I said, I, th I thought maybe a little bit of body position on that. Okay, definitely on top of the bar there. Was done nicely. Thought that was pretty well extended. And obviously up there near the handstand. 
And then watch her feet as they go by the low bar here. You can see the flex feet. And then, of course, the step on the landing. Okay, here's my evaluation of this. And just um, a warning, we had 12 people judge this. We had start values that ranged from 9.4 to 9.9. And um, so that makes you panic when that happens, right? Because uh, we're all perfectionists and we want to all agree and, and bingo our scores. But what was interesting about that was all of our scores kind of coalesced around the high eights, no matter what you did. And what the key to this routine is, is the giant half turn into the bail and what you did with that. I analyzed it and I could see where you could get the 9.4 or the 9.8 or the 9.9 start value. It just depends on how you treated that. So here's what I did with it. Started with the kip, squat on, uh, long hand kip, cast handstand. She hit that particular one, but had a body position. Giant half turn, and you'll see through my angles, she hit exactly 20 degrees. I don't know how the education committee came up with it exactly 20 degrees, but you'll see that one. And then the shoot over the uh, bail, I took a 10th body position there. Then uh, she was low on the toe shoot. So I took a 10th there, long hang kip, didn't quite expand it, half 10th, calf, cast handstand, bit short and body position. Giant full, you will see when we put the angles in there that that was quite low. Double back, dismount, I took a 10th plus a 10th. She did, didn't do a step forward and a step back. She did a step forward and another step. Um, she had three tenths in connective value, one tenth in DV for a nine eight start value. All judges agreed that she had the up to the level yeah. one tenth deduction because um, she has, well, even if you were to give the D to the bail, it's only one D release move. So no matter what, and it's not a single bar release move. So she's got an up to the level deduction for sure, no matter how you interpreted this. And my final score was an 885. And let's take a look at the slow motion. Okay, she's actually on top of the bar. I just thought she had a little bit of um, uh, body position error there. No matter how I measured this giant half, it was 20 degrees. However, I had a little bit of body position error in there. So if it's 20 degrees on the half turn, then there's no deduction for the height of it. But I had a little body position deduction of a half. And then on the bail, this confused me at first, but look, she's got a shoulder angle. So it's really not a handstand. We measure from the shoulder through the feet. And I did not award a D, I had awarded that one a C. And then I thought this was low, took a tenth there. Could have extended that kip, cast handstand, a little bit of body position, and um, a little bit low. So we have a half tenth for the height of that. Then this giant full. Let's watch this. When she puts her second hand on, look at that. I ended up taking two tenths for this. In reality, she's at about 50 degrees. You could take 0.25 to 0.3 on that. That was super late. And then her dismount took two tenths for that. This one is number nine. Um, here's how I evaluated that. She started with a kip to the high bar, cast handstand hop, C, 
front um, Jaeger piked E. I had a little bit of leg separation on that one. And remember, we give the extra DV for doing the single bar release there. Um, long hand kip, cast handstand, pack, glide, cast handstand, half turn, a little bit of um, leg position there. Kip, squat on, long hand kip, cast handstand, and then giant full into the dismount. Watch her knees as they pass the low bar on her giants. That's where my half tenth deductions are, are for her knees, and then a tenth on the step. Um, she had two tenths in connection value. Five tenths in DV, because remember, we got that extra. We had a D and a D, so that's two plus an E, four, five with that extra DV. Um, fulfilled all of her special requirements. Uh, I So she had a 10 start value. I had a three tenths in execution, and I ended up with a nine seven. Let's watch this one slow motion. Nice extension or kip, nice hop there. Pike Jaeger, cast handstand. I think we can probably see that that's nice and up there near the handstand phase. Pack, nice extension afterwards. A little bit of legs apart there, but nice and in handstand or near handstand. Now watch her knees as they pass the low bar. Knees, knees, legs. Watch the knees. Okay, that's fine. The giant full. Knees, legs. And then she has a little hop on the dismount. Okay, we'll go on to the last routine here. Okay, started with an A, cast handstand is short, giant, then she does um, a, a delta of, remember, I thought it was low and a little bit close to the bar. Remember, she gets the extra D for doing the single bar release, long hang kip. Here's a cast that's not within 20 degrees, so it gets no value and take that um, amplitude deduction of a tenth. Does a toe on to handstand. My half tenth there is for the bent arms. Uh, just a comment, one of the things we forget, I think sometimes, is that clear hips and toe on to handstands should be done with, and even giants, should be done with straight arms. And once you see them done well and with straight arms, you're, you'll go, oh, yeah, that's exactly how it should be done. Giant full, um, you'll watch a, a late turn on that one again. Then does a shoot over. Um, I gave that a, a bail. I just gave that a C. Kip, squat on, long hang kipped and extended, half tenth, cast handstand, a little short. Giant, and then did a double back layout. I awarded the layout. I took a tenth for the step and a half tenth because she piked the second um, salto just a bit. And again, I went out low on this one. So, you know, you might have a different score than I did. But let's watch it slow-mo and see what you think. Cast handstand. Okay. She's a bit short there. So we take the half a tenth. Here's her release. I thought that was a little, I took a tenth there. You might not have. Here's her cast. It's below 20 degrees, so it gets nothing, and we take a tenth deduction. A little bit of arm bend there. Um, when that second hand comes on, on the giant full, let's see where she is. And my, I may not have measured that angle perfectly, but we took 0.15 there. And here you go. We've got a shoulder angle here. This is not a handstand. So we measure through the shoulder and we're, we're not anywhere near handstand there. We're not near 20 degrees. Her head kind of juts out on that 
long hang kip. Here's another handstand that's a bit short. Half count there. The giant. And then the layout. Double layout or layout pike or whatever you did. I took my one five on that. As I mentioned earlier today, we had this project with college coaches and judges in which we were focusing on landing deductions and the coaches and the judging panels judged the same video clips and gave their scores. And then we came together and decided which ones would be the most appropriate for the landing deduction that we saw. So we did not take amplitude, height, distance, or execution. So when you see these video clips, you have to kind of force yourself not to think about those things, just to think about the deductions that are related to the landing. And I'll show you those. I'm not going to read through them all because they will be on the videos that are going to be posted. What we've done is put together anywhere between 13 and 18 video clips for each event. And they're going to be posted on our NAJ website, but not until December 15th. We're waiting until December 15th because we have two sessions with the college coaches in the next couple of weeks. And we want to just make sure that we uh, run these by all of the coaches and see if there's going to be any more um, deductions that we need to look at. But basically, these were the deductions that are related to the landing that we used. And then we just to remind you that a step close is considered one tenth deduction for one step. A very small step close or a small foot movement can be a half of a tenth. And if they land with their feet apart or staggered, and they continue to take steps, you only deduct for the steps at that point in time. So that's kind of in the asterisk on that list of deductions. But these are the deductions that used to be in our, our code, and they're actually in the XL online course. If you have not taken that and you're judging XL, it is a terrific online course to take through the USAG. So uh, this shows the deductions for the chest uh, and open position that what we will be taking as part of these landing videos. And then this, I cannot find it anymore except in the Excel course, but basically, if you can ignore the arm positions, this is still really applicable. So the no deduction, as you see, is pretty much with what Dave was talking about. I call it sit like a chair position. The arms are probably within the newer models, the arms are forward more than they are covering her ears. But you can see parallel can be up to one tenth, two tenths for um, both below, below, and then three tenths is really a very, very deep squat. So that can kind of be our guideline unless we get additional clarifications. Jenna, could you start the video? And we're going yeah. to just show you six examples. And like I said, we're going to have 13 of these up. You'll have, you're going to see each landing twice. This is the one that Dave showed in which he actually pointed out that our knee comes in just slightly. But the judging panel of coaches and judges we did not find a deduction for that. Uh, we don't have a deduction when they make that kind of an error. So this one, you see the gymnast take a step forward. And our panel of coaches and judges basically thought that was a one-tenth deduction. We put these in black and white to try to provide a little bit more anonymity. Well, this one's an unusual angle for the camera. I loved it because it was so clear to see the size of the step, which would give you a clue as to what the deduction for that step was. It would be considered a large step more than three feet or more. Okay, so in this one, you can watch and see what for the landing position that Dave was talking about. She does have some slight movement to maintain her control. And so the coaches and judges took a half a tenth deduction for that additional movement to maintain control.
This one, the coaches and judges took one tenth, and it was for her body position as her chest went forward and then also staggered feet. So check out the feet and the upper body position. And the last one we're going to look at tonight is here. And there was two-tenths deduction total for the squat and the step on the landing.